Hey everybody, Steve here in Long Island, New York at Young's Memorial Cemetery in Oyster Bay. I'm here to visit the final resting place, the gravesite of a former U.S. president, one of the most popular, Theodore Roosevelt. Now I would say Teddy Roosevelt, but apparently he didn't like to be called Teddy, he liked to be called Theodore. So Theodore Roosevelt is buried right here. This is a really pretty area out here in Long Island. So up here at the top of the hill, they have these uh, flyers. Young's Memorial Cemetery and Roosevelt Family in Sagamore Hills. Sagamore Hill is Roosevelt's historic home and now part of the National Park Service. And it's located just a mile and a half from here up the street. I'm going to walk up the hill here and visit the president's gravesite. And I'm also going to tell you a sad story about the man who died here at Roosevelt's gravesite. It's a very personal story that was shared with me by my friend and historian Kurt Dion. I was pretty shocked when he told me what happened. I'm here in the middle of the week, in the middle of the day. It's Wednesday, early afternoon, and it's been raining all day. And right now, there's just a light sprinkle. But that hasn't stopped anyone from visiting the president's gravesite. There's been a steady stream of visitors here since I arrived about a half hour ago. This kiosk informational panel reads, The Old Lion is Dead. The Lion was one of Roosevelt's many nicknames. He earned the nickname because he was a hunting enthusiast who, for sport, would shoot and kill lions in Africa. He also liked to hunt bears. But on a hunting trip in 1902, he decided not to kill a bear, and the story was reported on by the press. When Brooklyn candy shop owners Morris Mictum and his wife Rose, who also made stuffed animals, read the story in the newspaper, it gave them the idea to make a stuffed bear. They called it the teddy bear, in honor of the bear that Roosevelt decided not to shoot that day. And that's how the teddy bear was born in 1902. The teddy bear became a national sensation, and they're still being sold and are just as popular today as they were more than 120 years ago. Theodore Roosevelt was born in New York City on October 27, 1858, and died here in Oyster Bay, New York, from a pulmonary embolism in his sleep on January 6, 1919. He was only 60 years old. First Lady Edith Kermit was born in Norwich, Connecticut on August 6, 1861 and died from natural causes here in Oyster Bay on September 30, 1948. She lived to be 87 years old. Edith was Roosevelt's second wife. They had five children together, Ethel, Archie, Theodore, Kermit, and Quentin. And Ethel and Archie are also buried here in the cemetery. Roosevelt's first wife, Alice, died at the young age of 22 from Bright's disease, and they had one daughter, Alice Lee. On October 14, 1912, while delivering a speech in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Roosevelt was shot by an attempted assassin, but went on to say, I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose, and continued his speech. He was definitely a larger-than-life character and president. I'm here today on May 4th, 2022, but Kurt Dion, who I mentioned earlier, was first here on August 15th, 2004. He was nine years old and he was here with his dad to visit Theodore Roosevelt's gravesite, and they had the good fortune to meet Nick LaBella. Nick was a retired teacher who was born here in Oyster Bay, and he was also the superintendent of this cemetery. Nick loved giving tours of Theodore Roosevelt's gravesite and sharing his knowledge about the president with visitors who came to visit his final resting place. Nick also had the keys to the gate, so when Kurt asked if he could get inside the gates to take a photo standing next to Roosevelt's headstone, Nick was kind enough to open the gates for them so Kurt could get his picture. Nice story about the Congressional Medal of Honor and why it took 10 years for him to get that, uh, 100 years for him to get that. Go ahead up, you can photograph. Each other. And the photo that was taken that day is now the cover of Kurt's new book titled Presidential Grave Hunter, One Kid's Quest to Visit the Tombs of Every President and Vice President. His book has just been published and it's now available for purchase. His adventure to visit the grave sites of all the U.S. Presidents and Vice Presidents took many years to complete, accompanied by his dad and sometimes his mom and his sister. And the book is full of funny, sad, surprising, shocking, and moving stories of his encounters along the way. And one of those stories is about Nick LaBella, the kind and helpful man he met at Theodore Roosevelt's gravesite. Seven years after Nick helped Kurt get his photo, LaBella died from a heart attack on September 17, 2011, while he was in the middle of giving a tour to other visitors to the gravesite of Theodore Roosevelt. 
he died doing what he loved at one of the places he loved the most. Labella was a military veteran and was buried at Long Island National Cemetery, which is just 14 miles south of Roosevelt's gravesite. When Kurt learned of Labella's death, he decided to visit Labella's gravesite to remember the man who had spent a good part of his life keeping the memory of one of his favorite presidents alive. As I've mentioned in previous videos, my cross-country road trip in 2022 from the West Coast to the East Coast to visit the gravesites of all the U.S. presidents was inspired by Kurt's visit to all the presidents' gravesites. If you're an American history buff too, Kurt's new book is a must-read and might even inspire you or your kids or your grandkids to go on your own historic grave hunting adventures. Thanks again, Kurt, for the inspiration, and congratulations on your new book. It should be required reading in every history class. Ironically, there's nothing like visiting a cemetery to bring history to life. This week, I want to thank my newest channel supporters, JD, Cliff Sheffield, and Rachel Quarrel. Thank you all so much for your very kind and generous donations to my channel using YouTube Super Thanks. They're very appreciated. And thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe to this channel as well. That really helps and means a lot too. As always, thanks for joining me today on this very historic presidential road trip to the past. And until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.